Hello there and welcome to episode 49 of From Then to Now, the TEW 2020 save, where we take the World Wrestling Federation from 1992 all the way up to the modern day and we have finally entered November 1992, the last big pay-per-view of the year, building up to Survivor Series. We already know what the main event for Survivor Series will be, Ric Flair versus Yokozuna for the WWF World Heavyweight Championship. A year after all of the controversies with the WWF World Heavyweight Championship happened with The Undertaker and Hulk Hogan. But I'm looking forward to this show. We are in Houston, Texas for this show. I'm excited and I hope you guys are too. If you are, make sure you hit that thumbs up button and subscribe for more content. I hope you're just as excited to see this save back as I am. with Gene Oakland in the middle of the ring because essentially we've changed user character and the person who used to be my user character has been fired but Gene Oakland is in the middle of the ring ladies and gentlemen your opening match of this show is an open challenge match for the international television championship Cactus Jack comes out and who's his opponent going to be none other than the returning for the first time since pre-Wrestlemania Sid Justice. He has been in rehab this entire save, pretty much. But he's back. Still a babyface, because we never did his heel turn against Hogan. So we've got Jack and Sid. And it goes for 12 minutes before Jack picks up the victory, pinning Sid Justice in 12 minutes with the double arm DDT. And after the match, Sid goes and he shakes Jack's hand. Showing a bit of respect, lifts up the arm, congratulating him on a good victory. When Jack is jumped by Atuchi Anita and Genichiro Tenryu, the two SWS wrestlers who have been hounding Jack for the past month regarding this international television championship. But Sid doesn't just let it happen, Sid assists. Jack, and we announce later on in the show, but I'm going to tell you about it here, that we're going to get a tag team match next week. Tenryu and Anita versus Jack and Sid. It's a 67 rating. Great stuff. We have a backstage segment in the Hart family locker room, and it is Bulldog and Owen just arguing over what happened at Saturday night's main event. Bulldog is pissed off at Owen for getting involved in his business. Whereas Owen points out, Owen had left the building long before Bulldog's match started. What they did had nothing to do with Owen. Bulldog then rightfully responds, Well, if it had nothing to do with you, why did you go after them? You're, we are done with them, okay? Forget your petty insecurities. I'm sorry about what happened to you. What's done is done, and we need to move onwards. That's all we can do now. And Brett, and they just start getting in each other's face, and Brett just gets in the middle and just starts shouting them to shut up. And that's when we cut away, as they're still quite clearly tense in the locker room. We get a backstage promo. Hogan, Savage, Warrior, and Dusty... All chatting in their locker room. Warrior's about to go out for his match and they're sort of hyping him up. And they're all sort of cutting promos in their own very distinctive style, which I'm not even going to attempt with these four. But, the, but basically the gist of all their promos is Warrior's about to go out there and pick up a massive win against Kevin Von Erich. But we're out here almost every single week. We know what our team looks like. You're still trying to hide from us with your fourth member. We know it's Michaels. We think it's Luger. He's not been seen in ages. We know it's perfect. Who's number four? Hell, who's number three, maybe? Let her tell us. 
Give us the same freedom we are giving you. Because you know exactly what we, our plan is. But they are still going to be unable to stop it. 100 rating, because with these four, of course it's a goddamn 100 rating. Warrior goes out. We get a nice camera shot following him to the entrance ramp. He does his run. And he, and he beats Kevin Von Erich in a probably a bit too long match. With the military press slam. Look, he's got the stamina to go in this universe. We're in a different universe now. We're 11 months into a different universe. These characters are entirely different to their real life counterparts. Ke but Ultimate Warrior defeats Kevin Von Erich with the military press slam. Gets a 71 for, Von for Warrior. A 56 for Von Erich. A 68 overall. And after the match... Flair, Michaels, and Perfect, still no Luger, as Hogan rightfully pointed out, come out and they just start pounding down on Warrior. Michaels and Perfect hold his arms out as Riddler goes outside and grabs the Timekeeper's bell. Gets into the ring and whacks Warrior in the head with it. We get a little bit of blood, which is rare in my WWF, and in real 92 WWF, if I remember correctly. But we get blood. Warrior is bleeding. And out. Now, of course, we're in the early 90s. This will write him off for a while. This isn't like modern day where you can get hit by a ring bell and probably still kick out. This is an act which is taking Warrior out. And we cut backstage. And Mike McGurk, ironically, looks lost. Because she's struggling to find the other three. To interview them about why they weren't helping. And she finds their locker room. And it has been jarred shut with a broomstick. So they are unable to get out of their locker room. The segment ends with Mike McGurk calling out to try and get some assistance. And that is how we fade to black. We move on to our next segment. Which is a tag team match. It's essentially it's a totem pole, ma pole match. As the Natural Disasters and the Beverly Brothers fight... Both of them are sort of out of their recent feuds. They're in a bit of a limbo in between stuff to do. So it gives them a nice little something bit to do. Gives them a TV exposure. And it's the natural disasters who pick up the victory here when Earthquake hits the big splash on Bo Beverly. Gets a 58 rating. Both teams have chemistry boosts or specialist boosts, which is great news. We then get a promo from Razor Ramon, the first time he has been seen since his loss to Bret Hart two weeks ago. And he's just talking about how he is basically just finding any excuse he can to justify that loss to Hart, refusing to take any responsibility for it. Because in his last two big matches, he's lost against Bret and he lost against Cactus. And he is starting to lose a bit of the hype he came in with. Razor Ramon, however, is basically saying he is will prove everyone wrong that he is still the superstar that he was when he arrived. Gets an 82 rating. Good stuff. Jump into another tag team match, which features the smoking guns of Bart and Billy, taking on Fuji Goon, Satoshi Kojima, and Yoshinari Agawa. And the match is going good. It's a good match. You've got the guns of good wrestlers. Kojima and uh, Agawa are both incredible wrestlers. But we get a DQ finish, which actually is quite rare in my WWF. The DQ finish comes when Owen Hart comes in and just starts attacking Kojima and Agawa. And eventually the numbers get the better of him, especially when John Nord comes down. But Brett and Bulldog run from the back. And they attempt... To, they attempt to cry, basically try and save Owen, get him out of there. And they're just holding him back. And Owen just shoves Bulldog to the ground and walks to the back on his own. And Brett is basically there consoling Bulldog, but also conflicted because it's his brother versus his brother-in-law at the moment. They both blame each other for what happened at Saturday night's main event. And it is, it is hard to not see Owen at fault for what happened. We then get a promo from Bob Backlund because it's the because yesterday night would have been the first Thursday of November 1992.
the date of the United States election. So Bob Backlund is celebrating winning the presidency? Backlund, gone a bit senile, despite being younger than quite a bit of some, some of the people who were on the roster at the start of the safe. And he is essentially now believing that he is the president. You get to see a big campaign rally. You see him celebrating his inauguration in January. He's looking forward to it and he hopes that all of America will be there with him to celebrate the presidency of Bob Backlund. And our main event gets an 80 rating. That is great stuff. And it's a bit of a tag team showcase with the singles in a singles match as Steve Williams of the Miracle Violence Connection takes on the Road Warriors Animal. Of course, the Violence Connection lost the titles to the Road Warriors and they lost in their opportunity to try and earn a title shot again in the Tag League. The next title sh match will be the Road Warriors versus Money Inc. at Survivor Series. But this is Steve Williams was, I thought, the best person to put in a singles match against Animal. And I think I was right. He gets an 84, a 62 for Animal. Ellering does great stuff at ringside. And what do we get overall for this show? I think it's in the mid 80s. An 84. Pretty good guess, actually. But what's more important than that is what you guys thought at home. Let me know in the comments down below and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.